I am blatantly uninterested in people's strengths. Welcome to the Night Shift, where we discuss how young Christians can better live out their faith in a culture that is not conducive to Christianity. Today, we're going to be talking about suffering. We're going to be talking about fairness, more specifically the idea that life is not fair. I know we've both had kind of some experiences with that. And listen, we're all born into sin. We're all born into a sinful, chaotic world. And so we're all going to be born with things that we believe are outside of our control, uh, that we believe hinder us and hold us back. But in reality, a lot of those things can actually be used to propel us forward mm -hmm. um, and help us to accomplish our purposes uh, and our goals even more effectively and more efficiently if we use them for either the training mechanisms or the tools that we are. And so I know we both kind of have experiences with this and, and we're going to dive into that. Um, but first, I just want to talk about like the, the concept of fairness itself. And this is something that I've said before, but if life were really fair, I would be dead right now. I feel like that's kind of dramatic. Well, no, it's true for a lot of us. If everything was completely fair, I mean, like the, the wages of sin is death, right? Oh, and yeah. so we would kind of all like fair. We have this false reality or perception in our minds that fairness is somehow always in our favor. And it's not. If everything were completely fair all the time, I promise you would not like the outcome. And neither well, would I. Fair is also subjective. But it's but fairness really shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of actually what I'm getting at is it's a, it's subjective to us. Exactly. But that's a false perception of what fairness and justice mm -hmm. really is. And the fact that we even um, believe that we have the capacity to know what is fair and what is just and what is good is also pretty, pretty prideful, in my opinion. But aside from that, Basically, that's a, a suck it up statement in a way. Uh, moving along, I want you to talk about kind of some of the things that um, you perceived as a bit of like a thorn in your flesh or, or just things that uh, you felt you would always have to deal with and mm -hmm. how you've uh, begun to use those things in accomplishing your purpose. Yeah, so when we were kind of like discussing this whole life's not fair thing, the first thing that came to my mind was my dyslexia and my ADHD. So, and the combination of those two is actually really, really entertaining um, at times. And I'm sure our mother teaching me how to read was like, she should like get a gold Olympian medal for that. That was insane. Um, but a lot of people take these things like learning disabilities and use them as an excuse. And granted, it is very difficult because I, I had to learn, I had to go through it. I had to learn to read a completely different way than everybody else. Um, I couldn't, remember like the hooked on phonics, like you had to put your finger underneath the letters and like, I'd like put my finger in the middle of the word and like try to start reading. Oh wow, yeah. So. Um, People said sound it out, you're like, this, this, like, these aren't making sounds. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know, that's. So I wasn't able to learn to read a traditional way. I had to learn, I had to find something that worked for me. Um, but something that was so interesting is when I like started going into school and everything, uh, our mom told me that I wasn't allowed to tell people that I was dyslexic Yeah. and I had to learn how to do different things, different ways. And she wouldn't let me tell people I was ADHD either. So I didn't use these things as a crutch through life to get more time on tests, to maybe opt out of different things. Like I was told to push through um, and not use these things as a crutch, but actually actually learn to use them into my advantage, which later on studying, figuring out more about dyslexia and ADD, ADHD, I actually found out, yes, it makes something harder over here, but it actually helps you over here. Yeah. So people that um, are ADD and ADHD, basically we procrastinate things to the last minute um, and you'll see this across the board with people that are ADD we're procrastinators but we're creating crisis because we can hyper focus on something if it's a crisis now the benefit of that is in crisis is we tend to be pretty calm yeah because we're like oh we live in crisis all the time like that's how we manage like even to clean my house I'm like I saw I saw this TikTok going around of um, this ADD guy he's like yeah anytime like randomly call me and say hey i'll be at your house in 30 minutes but don't come 
because it'll make me clean my house. Right. And then get the whole thing done in 30 minutes. So we're procrastinators, but we thrive under crises. So there are amazing first responders. A lot of people in EMS tend to be ADD, ADHD, because they're ready for that crisis. And they can stay calm and they can actually focus. That, that's the time our brains can focus on one thing. A lot of military personnel, too, yeah. I've noticed. Yes. And then with dyslexia, we're, yes, reading's very difficult. Math is very difficult. Um, but we're amazing problem solvers. Yeah, because the cognitive functions that you have to come up with to mm -hmm. read in a way that, you know, reading was not meant to take place that way, yep. you, you begin to think about things differently mm -hmm. and break things down. And a lot of the a lot of the time people look and say, here's where I am and I want to get to here, right? Like, right? So what are my steps to get to here? A lot of people that are dyslexic go, okay, well, this is my goal. Let me work it backwards. Right. So we also think of things in very different ways. So instead of continuously looking at these as, oh my gosh, these are my learning disabilities. I've looked at them and I've tried to change the script a little bit and be like, okay, how can I use these to my advantage? I love that. Yeah. Um, that's so incredible. And tell me a little bit more just specifically with like your line of work and your purpose, how that's helped you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So one, just being able to continuously talk to people, like yeah. if, we have a girl in the house who is ADD, like I can talk to her about that, or I right. can, if they have a learning disability, be like, I get it, I understand. So I can have that sympathy and empathy mm -hmm. if it's something that they're going through. But it also, I mean, problem solving crisis is like a it's daily, abundant in it's your, a daily yeah. thing. So just being able to be so proficient in those areas, like I'm able to come up with things on the fly. Yeah. And if you don't know what she does, she works with uh, victims of human trafficking and provides mm -hmm. trauma care for them. So every little thing is a crisis. Everything you is a run crisis. out of cigarettes. It's a crisis. Yeah. You know, Everything it, is a yeah, crisis. you miss snack time. It's a crisis. Like, yeah, that's just kind of so very high stress levels. And she's able to mm -hmm. kind of operate on that safe wavelength with them, mm -hmm. um, which a lot of people, you know, their threshold is so much lower than theirs mm -hmm. because they've lived in a high stress environment. But because of the way that your brain operates just on its own, not even to mention your, you know, previous experiences in life mm -hmm. that also allow you to kind of operate at that baseline as well, you know, you're able to stay there with them. Right. Um, so it's almost as though your quote unquote weakness was actually catered to your purpose Yeah. and they fit hand in hand well together. And, and that's actually something that I want to speak on for a second because, um, this is something I, I literally just realized, like I'm blatantly uninterested in people's strengths. Like, because mm -hmm. at really the end of the is. day, there's always a hundred people better than you at whatever you're best at, mm -hmm. whatever your biggest strength is. There's so many people with your identical set of strengths mm -hmm. completely, but the thorn in your flesh, the experiences that you've gone through, the trauma that you faced, the suffering mm -hmm. that you've been through, all of those disasters that culminated into the person that you are today that is unique to you. That is your psychological, emotional, identical, like fingerprint. Mm -hmm. That is who you are. I, I don't want to hear about your mountaintops. I want to hear about your valleys. You could tell me your list of strengths. It would look a lot like a resume and I would know nothing about you. But you tell me a little bit about your story, about some of the things that you walked through, some of the mm -hmm. things that you've struggled with, some of the demons and the dragons that you've had to face. And I know who you are. Um, yeah. what do you think about that, about people identifying themselves more on their strengths than yeah. their weaknesses and that people making that mistake? I think it's a good tool. Mm -hmm. And with my team, like we take, we do these different strengths or personality tests, whatever it is that you do. We take those every year because people change. And once you undergo like different things in life, your strengths actually change. Like my strengths, when I did the strength finders seven years ago, is completely different than my strengths today. And that's just because life. So it's not something that you should definitely put your identity in or be like, oh my gosh, I am so good at, but it's an amazing tool. And it's great like for me as a leader to be able to see, okay, what is my team's strength and weaknesses is, and what do I need to bring in to fill those gaps? Yeah. Or what do we need to grow in as a team? Yeah. But I mean, everybody has those, those tools, right? Yeah. Like there's, you can find a good people person 
on every block mm -hmm. in every sorority. Like you can find a good people person everywhere or a good analytical person or somebody that's good with numbers everywhere. That doesn't make you special. No. And the word even says that God's power is made perfect in your weakness, not in your strength. Mm -hmm. So when you dig into to somebody's stuff, um, somebody's shortcomings, somebody's past failures, that's where the divine can really be mm -hmm. found. It's not in their outstanding GPA or their accomplishments or their resume. It's the pits that God had to pull them out of. Mm -hmm. That's where the divine is found in our identity. And so all of these things that we say we're, we were born with, or we say that wow. we got belt, dealt a bad hand. What are you talking about? That was a chance for the divine to come into contact with your story at some point in time. Mm -hmm. That's where the pen really touched the paper of the story of your life. And you're telling me that you got dealt a bad hand. Are you mm -hmm. kidding me? Well, and it's crazy cause I am just with my dyslexia and everything when I found out, so I had been tested. I think it was when you started learning to read. Right. And then they realized, okay, okay there's something's not right. One here. of these things is not like the other. Yeah, like this was way easy and this was really hard. Right. So they had me tested and I of course did not know what I was being tested for. And then it was a little bit down the road later, um, we were watching Sweet Sweet Life of Zack and Cody and one of the kids, the redheaded kid on there was dyslexic. And he was kind of describing what it was. And I, I asked, I was like, am I dyslexic? But it was crazy because what our mom did is she brought these celebrities that were dyslexic who have to act. So I remember, I don't remember who all was on that list, but I remember Orlando Bloom was. Right. And of course, like Pirates of the Caribbean was super big back then. I was like, oh my gosh, Orlando Bloom I'm so, is dyslexic. I'm so disappointed that you didn't list Lord of the Rings first. Well... Pirates of the Caribbean was really big at that time. Lord of the Legolas, so, come on. I totally had a crush on Orlando Bloom. So I was like, yeah. it was crazy. Cause I was like, oh my gosh, he reads and memorizes all these scripts. Like that's part of his job. So that right. gave me, instead of this, like, oh my gosh, I have this thing. I was able to look at someone and be like, okay, if he can do it, I can do it. Yeah. And it kind of put that fire under me. And now, I mean, I train, I speak, I, I write a lot. Yeah. Now I'm also even I do understand that. Yeah, I don't look at it as a disability, but it is a weakness. So I make sure all my stuff is checked by somebody else. So I take the precautions, we'll say, mm -hmm. of like, okay, I'm not going to send a newsletter out without it being spelled and grammar checked first, because I understand right. that I'm going to miss things. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, I've never used it and looked at it as a weakness or an excuse. Yeah, yeah, I need two microphones for this announcement. Listen, hey, if this is bringing value to you, if you're relating to this, go ahead and hit subscribe, hit the notification bell, like, do all the things that everybody tells you to do all the time, literally always. Uh, it really helps the channel out, and let's be honest, this is a message that more young people need to hear. So go for it. All right, back to what you came for. It's almost like in one area of vulnerability. It's almost like mm -hmm. a, a sensitive joint or something, and when you, when you rehab that, or when you take that into account, you're building up all the supporting muscles around mm -hmm. it to cover for that weakness. And so, yeah. you know, while you may have one specific weakness in an area, you've developed five to 10 strengths yeah. in the process of, of overcoming that. Mm -hmm. um, so you've got a net plus nine plus eight yeah. difference in, in terms of like weakness to strength ratio, just because you, you took the right attitude and approaching it. Um, and you know, my kind of predisposed weakness and difficulty is a little bit different from yours. I was born with an addictive personality. And so, you know, you, you look at something like that and you're like, okay, how could that ever be a strength, right? Mm -hmm. Like how, how could you, how could you turn that into something beneficial? So for one, the fact that I made all of those mistakes as you know, that wasn't God's will for my life, but it gave me a testimony. Mm -hmm. So even then he turned it around to have some power and some purpose behind it. Uh, two, it caused me to build out necessary disciplines, mm -hmm. um, that are actually at the core of a lot of my messages, like because of the, the, the things that I've dealt with in my past because of my addictive personality, I have to be like so far above reproach in so many areas. And I have to set up, um, boundaries with certain things like 
a mile before another person would mm -hmm. just because of like, I, I'm just self-aware and I know things about myself. Um, but that has created like such a different mindset that I think is so refreshing mm -hmm. to so many people because all they know is like, okay, let's just enjoy enough worldliness without falling in too deep. Right. Let me just flirt with the things of the world and go out to this place that I probably shouldn't be going out to, but like, it's okay. I'm not going to partake. I'm just going to be a part of it. Like all those things. And I'm like, no, get me as far away from the line as possible because the farther away I am from the world, the closer I am to him. And I think that that's a refreshing attitude that, mm -hmm. that people have been longing for. And so, you know, obviously my weakness itself isn't the strength, but all of the disciplines and the principles and the ethics that I've had to build up to cover for that weakness have benefited a lot of people. Um, so again, like if, if you have something that, you know, you see as, as a disability or a chink in the armor or a weakness, um, you know, first of all, there's nothing wrong with asking God for healing. Mm -hmm. I ask God for healing every single day. There's mm -hmm. completely nothing wrong with that. Um, but at a certain point, it's also personal ownership and accountability of like, okay, how can I build myself up in other ways that could cover for this, that could help mm -hmm. turn this into a strength and a benefit. The other thing I was thinking about is you had like crippling asthma. I did. And you didn't let that keep you from playing sports and you built your lungs up. And I mean, we all had like the little abuterol like inhalers with us. Yeah. Um, I still have them in my house to this day just to make sure. If For any, me? Yeah. Girl, I run like 28 miles like I'm but fine. like you I still it's just in the, always in the back of my head it's hilarious but like there were things that you maybe weren't able to do but you built up the muscle like you built up your lungs you you yeah. got better actually you were yeah not to brag mm -hmm. but I actually beat a guy that tried out for team USA swimming yeah. in a breath holding competition oh my god just saying. That's crazy. Yeah, no, but, I was pretty proud. I was representing for the asthmatics. <laughs> but so there's things in our lives that, you know, dyslexia, I, should, I shouldn't shouldn't be able to speak and read like I can. But you push past and you find a way. Yeah. You know, you shouldn't have been able to play basketball at the level you did. And you did. Right. And so it's looking, and I feel like in this society today any minor inconvenience is the end of the world yes and it's like oh my gosh well you don't understand i have anxiety yeah it's like no i do actually understand that but yeah. i don't let this control my life absolutely yeah and that's that's such a, a good point like we make things so much bigger than they really are mm-hmm and as much as I love my generation and your generation, I think that that is one of our biggest weaknesses yeah. is we exacerbate and we, it's like we keep blowing air into these balloons of, mm -hmm. of anxiety and weakness and um, self doubt. Mm -hmm. And then we completely deflate anything positive because again, we're looking at everybody else's highlights where we're yeah. comparing our weaknesses to other people's strengths and saying, mm -hmm. Oh no, I don't measure up. Now my self worth is, is mm -hmm. um, completely negated. No, that's not the case. And previous generations were very good at making big things very, very small. And we need to be somewhere in the middle. Like, <laughs> yeah, we need to we need to level out somewhere. Yeah, because it's like we don't want to sit here and just ignore it. Right. Because that actually doesn't help. Suppressing yeah. emotions and weaknesses and things. Yeah. Doesn't I mean, we help. all disconnected from reality. We just did mm -hmm. it on different ends of the the scale. Yeah, but, but then reality you can't is still blow it lost. up to this massive. Oh my gosh, do you remember like? The antidepressant like commercials were like be, be this giant cloud. Yes, that was hilarious. Like, it also can't be that. Yeah. You know, so you gotta find this middle ground of like validation of like, yes, this is difficult. Yeah. But. <laughs> and here's the thing, so many of these things are so practical. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, th like the the one, <laughs> um exception, not even an exception, but the one thing that, that I really had a hard time thinking about when I was trying to come up with something to say for this episode was mm -hmm. people with, with disabilities that really limit their lives, like mm -hmm. people that cannot walk, people that cannot yeah. speak or hear like these vital things, mm -hmm. um, that, that 
plays such a large role in our everyday lives. But then I go to church Mm -hmm. and I see people in the the ASL section. Mm -hmm. I see the community that they've built. I see all the outreach that they're doing. Um, I see, you know, friends of mine that are heavily disabled evangelizing Mm -hmm. and sharing the hope of the Lord. Um, because at the end of the day, your heart's still beating. Your sp- mm-hmm. the spirit can inhabit whatever body. Yeah. The Holy Spirit is not limited by your disability. Mm-hmm. It, it can work through you in such creative ways. And it has very little to, to do with your ability to walk down that aisle or mm-hmm. your ability to, to speak or even hear mm-hmm. or read. Um, the Holy Spirit has circumvented much bigger problems than your flesh, much yeah. bigger problems than your carnality even. Um, yeah. So it can work with you if you're willing to work with it. Yeah. It was crazy because even one time I was doing this training and I like knew my material, but there was this one slide and it was a bunch of statistics. I have a hard time saying that word. Statistics. 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 <laughs> uh, <laughs> And um, I was like, okay, when I get to that, I'll just, I'll read. I don't want to try to memorize all these statistics. I will just read it. And when I got to that slide, like something kicked in and that whole slide just looked like alphabet soup. And I was like, crap. Hmm. Like, I don't know what I'm going to do right now. And my training partners were actually out of the room at that time, like getting ready for lunch. So I had no one to like lean on and be like, um someone else take this slide for a minute? Like I had, and I don't know what happened, but I, I knew them. Yeah. Like I, I knew them and I, I truly do believe it was just the Holy Spirit just in that moment being like, we're not going to do this. Yeah. And I was able to get through and no one knew. And afterwards, you know, I told my team, I was like, oh my gosh, that was like so scary because I was up there and all of a sudden I couldn't read anything. And, but I, and yeah. they said, Kayla, you didn't get one wrong. And I was like, huh. Yeah, cool. and, your, and your ultimate nightmare was not yeah. near as, yeah. Yeah. And that actually brings up something, something interesting. Like, we all have those thoughts about when we're standing before God, what's he going to say? Mm-hmm. And, you know, how are we going to be judged and all of these things? And, and I tend to lean on the, on the theology that there's kind of two judgments. There's a judgment for salvation, whether or not you accepted Jesus. And then there's the judgment where God says, okay, this is everything that I wanted you to do. Mm-hmm. And this is what you did. Um, and, oh and my gosh, that, mine's going to be, well, yeah. And okay. that judgment, I firmly believe that my strengths will not be praised mm-hmm. or even acknowledged because the, the Bible is very clear as I've begun to kind of read more of the Old Testament and the New as well. Um, you can either get your credit here on earth or you can get mm-hmm. it in heaven. It's very clear on that. Um, you can go for the acknowledgement of man, mm-hmm. fine. Or you can go for the acknowledgement of your heavenly father. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I'll get hit up every single day with people saying, oh, you're so wise, you're so well-spoken, you're so articulate. You've gotten that since you were a kid. Yeah, so I know for a fact, and that doesn't, that doesn't really do it for me. That mm-hmm. doesn't excite me, that doesn't impress, I'm not impressed by myself in those areas at right. all. I, don't, I could care less. Um, but I know for a fact God is not going to say a word about those. Right. He could care less, because I didn't do anything for that. But my weaknesses, the things that I had to push through, the things that I had to overcome, the things that I had to somehow try to figure out how to integrate into my character when I thought to myself, I could never be a man like that. Mm-hmm. I could never have this. I could never have, you know, David's bravery or, or Paul's steadfast nature or mm-hmm. anything like fill in the blank. I couldn't have that. The things that you feel like you're least effective in. Mm -hmm. But you work and you pray and you intercede and you worship through the difficulties in order to try to integrate that into to who you are, because, you know, it's a part of God's original design for you. Mm -hmm. That is what he's what he's going to acknowledge. He's going to acknowledge what nobody else would have, what the teacher never acknowledged in you, what your family never saw in you, what your in-laws never saw in you, Mm -hmm. what all the people screaming your praises never saw in you. Mm -hmm. That's what he's going to acknowledge. And I can't wait to see what that is. I'm so excited for that. I think about that verse when it says the first will be last and the last will be first in the kingdom mm-hmm. of heaven. I know people always think of that as like actual people. Right. I don't. I think it's, you know, the least of the things that 
we think about is what he cares about the most. Yeah. And the things that we think should be first, he's like, mm. <laughs> yep. Mm. Yep. Everybody knows you're good at this. Everybody knows this person's the bees. Yeah. Like, who cares? Who cares? I at the like end of the day, what impresses the the um, the creator of the universe? What impresses the God of mm -hmm. Abraham and Isaac and Jacob? What impresses him? Mm -hmm. You look in the Bible; it's humility, yeah. it's meekness, <clears throat> uh, it's a humble heart, it's obedience. That's what impresses. Mm -hmm. It's faith, right? Those are the things that that impressed Jesus. That made him take a step back. Yeah. Um, you know, when Solomon asked for wisdom, God was impressed in that moment. There's things like that. Um, that's what God finds impressive. Yeah. And so I think you're absolutely spot on that. Like the least of these, the meekest mm -hmm. will be the first. I yeah. love that. I think I've built an entire career on my weaknesses and yeah. my setbacks in life. <laughs> yep. I love that. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, okay, let's just keep, keep going in it. But it continuously makes me point back to him. Be like, yeah. Oh, I, I wouldn't. Like, because everything is what he's brought me through or what he's um, kind of redeemed in my life, you know, yeah. it's a constant point back to him. Be like, oh, I couldn't do it without him. Like, yeah, it I becomes a be testimony here. at that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm, I don't know what I would do without the thorn in my flesh, because every good thing that has been a part of my life has come out of a desperation towards Jesus. Like mm -hmm. a full on, I'm going to cling to you and I'm not going to let go because the waves are so high and I know I can't do it alone. That has been Ow. the tree that sprouted every bit of good fruit that I've seen in my life is, is relentless desperation towards Jesus. And mm -hmm. I only wonder what kind of left turn I would take if I didn't have that. Yeah. Wasn't it Paul who talked about the thorn in this flesh? Yeah. That's kind of why I keep referencing that. Yeah. Um, because a lot of people in the, and I don't want to get into like a theological debate here, but with the whole God wants to heal everybody testimony, just mm -hmm. like they love to ignore Paul's health problems, even though mm -hmm. he was one of the most Holy spirit anointed guys, nobody could point a finger at him and say that he didn't have faith or that he didn't have faith enough to mm -hmm. ask to be healed, or that if he had asked that, you know, God wouldn't heal him if God wanted to heal everybody, sure, he would have, he would have healed Paul. No, he didn't. Well, okay, here's what I think. I think that healing does come, but sometimes healing comes by being completely, like, restored in heaven. Yeah. Like, so, yes, I do believe that he wants to heal us all, but sometimes <clears throat> that healing is actually being in heaven. I like that you, that's eternal thinking right there. Mm -hmm. Cause this, this restoration process is not a, an 80 year project even, right? you know, and the flesh is going to be burned off anyways. Like who cares? Yeah. Who cares? Yeah. Restoration is, so is, I can pat all mine up. It's fine. Yeah. Some, <laughs> sometimes restoration requires complete demolition. Mm -hmm. The foundation is everything. You just got to start from a blank slate. Yeah. And so sometimes it can't be fixed with some drywall. You know, God is just bulldoze it down. Yeah, start God's gonna over. be like, okay, I'm gonna let you live out your life. I'm gonna start from ground zero. I'm gonna give you a new body, yeah. and you'll be healed. Yeah. I can get behind that. Um, but yeah, the That's whole what I believe that God wants to heal everyone is. Yeah, I can I can get on board with that mm -hmm. for sure. Uh, I'm just not, you know, it's it's hard to build a theology around everybody is going to be healed now at once because then, you know, if somebody's not healed, it's somehow their fault always. Yeah. And I'm just and like, nah, man. <laughs> it's like, no, it's not that he, cause he says, if you have faith, the size of a mustard seed, you can move a mountain. So it has yeah. nothing to do with our faith. Yeah. And it's, all. it's like, you think that I have enough power to stop the will of almighty God to heal me? Like, come on. Well, and what if like, maybe I just think of our grandma mm -hmm. who, she and every single day lived in so much pain. Yes. And she would <clears throat> literally like put her feet in ice baths to just try to get it. She had neuropathy. And so like, yes, that death was awful and it was so hard, especially like I was very, very close with her. And so, but how much mercy was also in that? Yeah. She lived such a graceful life. Mm -hmm. And you think of somebody that's going through such a turbulent struggle. Mm -hmm. They develop such a sense of grace about them. Mm -hmm. And there's a, there's a gracefulness with how they walk things out because the choppy waters, they're so used to them. Yeah. Nothing rattles them anymore. 
It's yeah. like, okay, well, what can you really throw at me? Yeah. The, the sting of this isn't enough to get me down. So what can you throw at me? I love that. And mm-hmm. I think that we can all develop that attitude without necessarily living in that reality 24 seven. Right. I, I think that we really do have the ability to be unwavering and to be mm-hmm. firmly rooted and to be graceful and kind in the midst of absolute chaos. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, whatever you feel like set you behind or gave others a head start or has, has been just a pain in your side, um, for the longest time, I hope that you're encouraged. I hope mm-hmm. that, you know, um, healing is available, but also that might look like healing for somebody else through your pain. That might look mm-hmm. like years and decades of encouragement for others because of what you have to go through. Mm-hmm. And at some point that's going to become okay with you. Um, and that's going to give you so much more joy than the remedy ever would have. Right. So I hope you're, en- you're encouraged by this. You got anything else to say? <laughs> Happy go lucky. I love it. Well, love you guys. God bless y'all. We're clocking out here.